Good afternoon and welcome to Selhurst Park, the home of Crystal Palace Football Club for this ESFA Under-13 PlayStation FC Schools Cup for B-Teams final. That's a mouthful, isn't it? It's a bit different from the FA Cup final, but it's a great title and it's a great competition. And many teams have entered this one and we're down to the final two. It's the Glenmore and Winton Academy based just outside Bournemouth against Hurstmere School based in North Kent near Bexley. It's going to be a wonderful day as you can see here. Selhurst Park looking absolutely beautiful. And it's also National Schools Football Week where this is the only match on the ESFA calendar that's taking place. So uh, this match is representing the Schools Football Week which is taking place this week from the 24th to the 30th of May. More details about that a little bit later. First of all, concentrate on this match. And we first of all, we've got a message from Jairo Riedewald, Crystal Palace player. And he sent a message to both teams. We are celebrating Schools Football Week at Sellers Park by hosting the B Team National Final. How would you celebrate? Good luck to Glenmore and Winton Academy and Hurst Mayor School in their match. A few words there from the Crystal Palace Premier League player. And also a few more words to come because earlier, just a little bit earlier, I got to speak to both managers and this is what they had to say. Charlie May, manager Glenmore and Winton, great to see you here at Sellers Park. You must be so proud of the boys getting through to this national final. Oh yeah, they've been absolutely brilliant. You know, we've had a couple of away days which have been nice and then we um, invited a Manchester school down in actually the quarterfinals, which was nice for them to come down and enjoy their time in Bournemouth. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they've been great um, throughout all the rounds, um, impeccable football played and um, yeah, they've just handled themselves really well. And also we've got the situation that this week is the school's football week and this is the only final taking place this week. So it's a special occasion for school's football overall that you're representing the ESFA this week. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's, it, it's just to see the lads' faces and we've managed to bring a few staff members up and like, it's just an <laughs> amazing experience. Um, I, I think only two of them have been to watch a, a match at um, Sellers Park. I've never been here, so it's it's a lovely stadium. Um, the boys are absolutely thrilled. And say, like we were saying, the um, to be the only final played in a stadium is just what an experience for for all of us. So we're, we're absolutely buzzing. Can't wait to get going. Absolutely. And I'm right in reading. This is the first year you've put a B team in, and here they are in the national final. That's that's incredible. Yeah, I mean. The school numbers have been getting bigger and bigger, so we've had more boys that want to play football, um, and, and we had an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary year group um, this this lot are, um, where the A team boys made made it pretty far a couple of years ago, and they made the semi finals of the Elite Cup, and we thought it'd only be fair to to enter the B competition. So for yeah. them to get to the final was absolutely incredible, um, and we made the right decision entering them. Yeah. Strength in depth, that's important. Well, look, have a great day. It looks like the weather's going to be wonderful today. And a Premier League football ground, what else can you wish for? Oh, exactly. What a day for it. Yeah. Take care. Thank you very much. Gary Joyce, manager of Hurstmere School. Uh, congratulations, Gary, on getting through to this national final. Uh, so many rounds you've had to compete in to get here. You must be tremendously proud of the boys just to achieve this final here today. Yeah, what a great, great expectation uh, that we've uh, we've managed to get here. They've worked hard throughout the competition. Uh, they won the Kent Cup very early on, uh, and so really concentrated hard on this ESFA Cup, which we fell short of last year, and um, and, and produced goods all the way through to the the semi final. And now here we are today. I know, and, and incredible as well. This is the B team, so you've got a lot of very talented kids who've played in your A team, and these are the reserves who just didn't quite make it. But yet again. What skills, what strength in depth you've got as a school? 
it's, it's so lovely. We've got 210 kids in each year group, all boys, and um, how much they love football. It's absolutely incredible. So I don't just run an A and a B team. I run a C team and a D team. Uh, and when we train, uh, it's just open training. So uh, everyone that just loves football comes along. You oh, know, it's something our kids at our school absolutely adore. Well, that's wonderful to hear, and long may that continue. We, we need more teachers like you around, I, I can say that. Um, you've got a great final here. Here you are on a Premier League football ground with your boys going out. Does that get the little hairs going on the back of your neck as you look around here today? It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. The, uh, the lads are so excited. What a great opportunity for them. Uh, if it's their only one in their lifetime, how great it is that they've managed to do this. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And just just an open question, really. Like the ESFA National Cup competitions have been running for many years. How important are these cup competitions to your school and and the kids who play in it? We um we play in two other competitions called the North Kent and the Kent. And over these last few years, we've managed to dominate both those two competitions. So we we win the North Kent pretty much every year with m many of the year groups uh, and we're starting to win the Kent very frequently our year 10s have just done so last Saturday um, our year 8s as I said earlier did it uh, about uh, 12 months ago when, the, when this, the competition was there so to have the ESFA it allows our lads to play against lads from all around the country not just from in the local area who they know quite well anyway so it's, it's wonderful the ESFA it allows our boys to really go that extra level Yes, and you've done a fair bit of travelling as well. Although your last three rounds were at home, so you've made the other teams travel, so you had the look of a draw on those. Look, Jeff, I'll let you get back to the lads. Thank you very much for your time. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Well, a real pleasure to speak to two very knowledgeable football men in the world of school sport who uh, put a lot of time in at the grassroots level and this is their reward here today the teams have gone in they've all warmed up they are very excited do i need to say that because here we are on schools football week for the only esfa national final this was one of the games that was cancelled from lillishall a little while ago and god aren't we all waiting for schools football to kick back off again and to have some of the great scenes we've seen over the years it uh, truly has been missed we are going to look at the two teams before we get into the action of course this is the lineup for glenmore and winton academy you can see charlie vickery who's uh, is in goal and there's the lineup charlie may as you see manager warren doyle is the coach and max scott is the physio conditions out there absolutely incredible really good conditions for football should be uh, an absolutely wonderful day for the boys as for the opposition Hurst Mere School <laughs> house DJ decided to press play <laughs> that gave us all a bit of a heart attack here's the Hurstmere school lineup Harry Joyce and Mark Robinson are our officials here for Hurstmere school well the teams are coming out that's how we suddenly heard the music that went from 0 to 11 in no time at all. Glenmore and Winton in the sky blue. Hurstmere in the red. Let's have a look at the uh, substitutes as well while they just line up here. Those are the subs. They'll be playing two halves of 35 minutes, potential of 10 minutes each way, extra time and even penalties. Our uh, last final last week did go to penalties. They're just uh, 
in the arena they are just playing the uh, video which we played a little bit earlier good look message from uh, Jaro Riedewald always a hotly contested final at the under 13s level and certainly one that we uh, are all looking forward to here in such a it's the only final here at Selhurst Park kids have been told they can uh, look up, turn around look up at the big screen they're all ready I think they're all a little bit nervous as well perhaps for what is certainly the biggest day in their lives in terms of football and we can hear uh, announce uh, our MC is just going through the teams uh, while we uh, while he's doing that and there is a shake of hands this is as I mentioned earlier it is schools football week which is an initiative launched by the ESFA about four years ago designed to celebrate the many benefits of schools football in England this year the uptake in activity has tripled with over 600 schools registering some form of activity from inter-school matches penalty shootouts to fundraising football marathons equating to over 105,000 children taking part in football related activity both inside and outside the classroom so the key message for schools football week has been for children to get outside have fun and just to enjoy playing football with their friends it doesn't matter how good or bad you are just go out and enjoy yourself especially at this difficult time that has been faced by children and education providers alike with COVID not getting out so much. Well, the red team, Hurstmere. This is there. There's no manager involved. This is just the players firing themselves up. Today is the school's football week game on activity day this is where the ESFA has encouraged as many football matches to take place across England and create the world's biggest football match and we're of course delighted to be hosting the PlayStation FC under 13 B team schools cup final on this day and having these two teams involved as part of the action campaign has been backed by the Department of Culture, Media and Sport with the sports manager Nigel Huddleston commenting that this year has been particularly young, tough on young people being away from friends and sports and it's great to see priorities on children's education and physical and mental well-being throughout. Well, the two captains And of course, we're still not allowed supporters here at the moment. It's only at the top level sports that where there's strict stewarding and rules are enforced where it's allowed. I'm told uh, that there are parents who are in the ground today so that's great to hear we might hear a bit of encouragement socially distanced encouragement of course and so here we are our referee is William Donnelly Joshua Reed and Shay James are our, the linesmen or assistant referees as they call them these days and Alfie Howden is our fourth official so just check that uh, we've got the correct number of players on each team we're ready to go here at Selhurst Park in this PlayStation FC under 13 Schools Cup for B teams final and it's Glenmore and Winton in the blue kicking from left to right my name's Adrian Battersby well welcome aboard always great to see uh, so many fans no little nudge there from number five I thought that could have been called as a foul perhaps but of course this is the first age group where the players play on 
full size pitchers. Of course, the uh, under 12s are always on the, the Niner side on the smaller pitchers. That's a good ball down the wing here. Here's Hurstmere, Marcel Gordon, and the first corner of the match. Gordon getting to stretch the legs down that right wing very early on here. Hurstmere just uh, working out who's going to take this corner. Marcel Gordon decides he wants to be in the box where it's all happening. And it's Louis Jordan who's gone to take this corner and swing it in, swing it in with the left foot. Into the six-yard box and the goalkeeper does... That's a very, very solid take there from Charlie Vickery. Lots of bodies around him. That will give him a lot of confidence. Wonderful conditions for uh, game of football here. Well, always good for a goalkeeper to get a little bit of confidence early on. You can see he's already stood in the middle of his six-yard box as he comes to collect that one. Glenmore and Winton. Here's Rob Taylor. That's cut out by Beaumont. And a nice ball inside. Bit of space in the middle here for Charlie Thomas, who goes for a very early quick ball, trying to pick up Louis Jordan. We've already seen he's got a, a good left foot from that corner we saw a little bit earlier. A solid tackle. The ball cleared out. That was uh, Rahman, Rahman Mia. James Beaumont coming to take the throw. It's a pretty decent throw as well into the heart of the box. This is trouble and a good save, although I think he'd have been disappointed if that had have gone in. But a long throw there causing a little bit of uh, a few issues here for... For the Glenmore... Winton team. Sun blasts out here across Selhurst Park. Good clearance from the back as well. That was Isaac Greenway. Hurstmere having uh, probably a little bit more of the ball in these first five minutes. Let's have a look at uh, that last instant. The long throw came in. There was a bit of confusion in the box. And here's Marcel Gordon tries to hit it on the turn. But straight at the goalkeeper. Here's the uh, same action from another angle. You see the uh, confusion here a little bit. Two players, uh, Element and Franklin, getting in each other's way a little bit. Solid challenge there. Here's Franklin, the captain. It's a fierce challenge though, and Franklin has to go backwards. 
And now a chance for Louis Jordan, who's seen a lot of the ball in this first five minutes, but loses that one out. Franklin again, who's quite clear. Oh, here's an opportunity. That was Bradley Walker there. Ball just slight miscontrol. And a very open game here. Charlie White on to Franklin, who's in the center of well, he's in the center of the pitch, but also the center of most of the Glenmore and Winton attack so far. He's really the creative player for the team in blue. Rob Taylor down the line. Here's Bradley Walker, who's the top goal scorer. He certainly wants to watch out for. Well, let's have a look at that uh, earlier opportunity here. Great ball through from Franklin. And, well, Walker is a man who's is a, is a lad who scored a lot of goals. And here's an opportunity on the counter-attack there quickly. Charlie Thomas. And he's looking to go all himself. Great tackle. But Jordan. And well saved by the goalkeeper. Well, it's all happening here. There's no way this match is going to finish 0-0. So many uh, opportunities at both ends of the pitch. And here's that last one. Great skills here from Charlie Thomas. He's he's already taken one player on, Tom Phillips, and well, a slight miscontrol here, but then wonderful turn. Decides to try and get the shot away. There's a half tackle there from Mia, and then Jordan in the end, saved by the goalkeeper. Here's an off chance now on the edge of the box. But cleared away. Good defence from Hurstmere. And Jake Beaumont, a lot of attacking down this left hand side. Tries to play in Charlie Thomas, but that ball is just, just too wide. Lots and lots of half chances. Nobody's had a, a clear-cut one as yet, you could say. Here's that earlier chance from... Uh, you see the shot. The goalkeeper did well, actually. That was an awkward place for the ball to end up. You could see that the goalkeeper potentially had a... He almost had a, a thought about... Let's have a look at this again. Here's uh, Walker coming through. Uh, sorry, that was Thomas, Charlie Thomas, and then Marcel Gordon. That was actually an awkward um, shot. There's a few parents you can see in the stand. A few very proud parents and I think grandparents there as well. have come to watch their kids compete in this major national final. Very sad that there's not been so many of them this year. Mia loses out to Thomas. And again, a slide tackle from Mia. And he manages to get the ball. First Mia finding space. Great ball across. Here's Thomas again. And you're just sensing that Hurst Mia is starting to find some space, especially out on this left wing. Miscontrol up on the top side there from uh, Charlie Hennessy. Real tussle in midfield there, but it's Frankie Boggins who comes away with it. Mia manages to intercept, and if that's a wise head on young shoulders, he wasn't sure what to do with it, and in the end, just passed it out for a throw in and that was very wisely done if he'd have tried to turn he could have turned into trouble right in front of his goals powering header You've got to remember it's uh, the ages of these kids this is an under 13 event 
Of course, this is the final from last season, so a number of these kids will be older. I should have asked, actually, uh, my resident expert, Sarah from the ESFA. But, uh, are these kids actually the kids who would have qualified in the summer? There's a long-distance shot. So do we have some, I suppose you could say, overage kids now for, of course, when the final should have been played? They would have been the correct age. Um, I'll let my assistant Sarah uh, come back to me on that one. minutes gone and Sarah thank you for answering me they are the ones from the original competition so technically some here will be under 14s this is the under 13 final here's a chance oh what a chance that was and I'm not sure why the referee is blown was that offside perhaps real opportunity here best chance of the first half Lovely skills from Zach Moorcroft, uh, sorry, from Louis Jordan. And Charlie Thomas here feeds Frankie Boggins. Oh, I think that was an offside flag. You heard the whistle. But here's a chance, and here's the first goal. And you can hear the parents applauding in the background. Mistake at the back. And Hurstmere take the lead. Here's the replay. Long ball up front. A bit of confusion left for the goalkeeper. But it's Louis Jordan who's in on the ball and gets in front of the goalkeeper. 1 0. Hurst me a lead. Here's Marcel Gordon on the right again. Cleared. Well, there's definitely been a, a lot of opportunities for both teams in this first half. You could say, based on what we've seen in the first ten minutes. Uh, sorry, 15 minutes at Hurstmere just have had the lion's share of play. Charlie Vickery in goal for Glenmore and Winton. Referee playing an advantage, but didn't see anything come of it. Glenmore Winton certainly going to be looking towards their number nine. He scored 11 goals in this competition, including four in the quarter final against Man Manchester Health Academy. Misplaced pass there. Just having a little look. Uh, Glenmore Winton in the blue. 
had a bye in round one. In round two, it was a 7-0 victory over St George Catholic College of Southampton. In round three, a big victory over Waden School, who we've seen in ESFA finals before. It was a 5-2 after extra time. Really tight affair that was. And Gordon's done well here for Hurstmere. And that will be a throw to the Blues. Just clicked off Gordon as it was played out. So a big victory over Waden School in round three. In round four, it was Ivy Bridge Community College and another club we've another school we've seen a lot of in ESFA finals. And he's onside here. This is a real opportunity. Great block at the last second. And the geek keeper makes a spectacular save, but yes you can just hear a few uh, calls out about panicking I think there's a few players here expecting the offside wonderful tackle there by uh, that was Rahman Mir and in the end ball going out of play another smart one two and again this combination of Louis Jordan and Charlie Thomas 10 and 11 on this left hand side really looking incredibly strong playing some great one twos between each other Mia gets to the ball first. No real support. And a long distance shot. And the goalkeeper is caught off his line. And that's 2 0 to Hurstmere. And possibly what was more of a speculative shot came good. And Hurstmere take a 2-0 lead and their dominance here shows. You see uh, Rachman manages to clear the ball out but it's, it's hit from a long distance by the number six, Sam McLaren-George, the defensive midfielder and doesn't he hit it sweetly. Look at that, he's Incredible. He's almost passed the ball into the net there. Has uh, McLaren George. Well done, sir. 20 minutes gone. Hurstmere lead 2 0. Both teams have scored a lot of goals. Getting through here. Just looking at Glenmore. Scored 22, conceded 6. Hurstmere tw scored 29, conceded 4. So both teams have had some big victories. And again, the ball over the top. Given away there by Vickery. This could be an opportunity. And it's goal number 3. And Hurstmere, you feel, I've already got half a name on this trophy. Back pass to the goalkeeper who really didn't hit through it. Tried to pass it to his own defender but the pass was never on. And it's Louis Jordan who finds the back of the net. And Hurstmere lead 3-0 with just 20 minutes on the clock. Clement George. Here's Jack Franklin. He's hardly had. He's looked very impressive when he's had the ball, but what a tackle that was from Chargi Seguin. Captain on captain. Two number eights.
cleared out there by James Allen. Well, what a nightmare start here, but I think you've got to say Hurstmere definitely deserve the lead. 3 nils, possibly a little bit uh, generous to them. But they'll take it, of course. Rob Taylor, good skills, turns inside, takes on two or three players there, and there's a beautiful inside ball. This could be a half chance. Goalkeeper does brilliantly there. What great goalkeeping from Isaac Greenaway. Just see this again as Rob Taylor took on two or three players. What a ball that is from Charlie White, just inside, and well, the goalkeeper really puts himself in the line of fire there. And uh, well, the referee has just stopped play for a second as uh, undoubtedly he's hurting a little bit. That was certainly Glenmore and Winton's best opportunity. Well, we've not had really a chance to look at uh, the last two goals were in such quick succession. Let's have a look at uh, another replay of his second goal here as the ball comes in, Mia clears. And it's not a bad clearance, to be honest. Gets a little bit of distance on there, but look at this for a sweet knock. And catches the goalkeeper off his line. What a hit that was from the little number six, Sam McClellan-George. You just see him having his water there. And then, uh, well, let's have a look at goal number three as well. This was uh, the back pass from Mia, and Vickery here, I think, well, when he goes to bed tonight, he'll be thinking, why didn't he just hit through that ball and get distance on it? Because he's put it straight into danger. He's tried to pass it, and, well, it was Louis Jordan, who's been uh, a dangerous player throughout, who put that ball in the back of the net, and uh, certainly what a start this is. So really important now for Glenmore and Winton to try and get a goal back just before half time. They've got six minutes to try and do it as uh, darkness descends around Selhurst Park. Six minutes to go in this first half. Just a period of uh, consolidation needed here for Glenmore and Winton. But again, number 10, Louis Jordan. Always dangerous. And the four players up front for 
Hurstmere having a lot of fun out there today. Fred Ward, first time I've mentioned his name in this match. The ball has been in the Glenmore and Winton's half so much that uh, some of the players have hardly had a touch. And here's another opportunity now. Charlie Thomas looking to push on. Marcel Gordon tries to take on the defender. And Thomas, ball was stuck under his foot a little bit there as he tried to have a quick shot away. Roman Mia has had a lot of the ball unfortunately and he's lost it out here Louis Jordan he's got players in the middle but it's well well cleared there by uh, that was uh, Cohen Elements there helping out at the back Mia certainly was in big trouble now here's a chance here's Franklin he's been one of the big playmakers for Glenmore and Winton and appeals for a corner but that doesn't come off and you just feel that Franklin hasn't had enough of a ball for his team in this first half at all looks like there might be a substitution taking place down there Harry Stevenson is coming on and Charlie White is off number six it's gonna take a breather on the bench three minutes to go in this first half and what a start here for Hurstmere bit of a miss kick from the goalkeeper but it managed to somehow get to the halfway line Zach Smith is uh, also on the number 15 so missed an earlier substitution Isaac Zavi Beaumont again down this left hand channel Thomas on the end of it he fancies it himself and he's taken on his player and forced the keeper into a very smart save you do feel that uh, Hurstmere forward line do do believe that they've got one up on the defensive line for Glenmore and Winton see this uh, move again not missing anything on the pitch ball is still out of play good save by the goalkeeper there and the parents watching this they made a bit of a noise there didn't they when they it was lovely to hear a crowd cheer when a goal went in we've uh, we've not seen much of that at all last couple of minutes here in this first half of the under 30 PlayStation schools cup for B teams boys category has to play that quickly and just about manages to here's Rob Taylor it's down the line but Hurstmere just seemed to be just that little bit faster to the ball in midfield Here's an opportunity now for Charlie Thomas. Goes in on his right foot for a change. It's certainly not his stronger foot. You can see from the shot, but he's took out two or three players there as he came inside. Really lovely skills here from Thomas. Nobody was expecting this. I think every every move he's done so far, he's been on the left. There you see, Shimmy's left. Nobody expects him to go right. the end the goalkeeper just gets a hand on it well we are officially in extra time I don't think we've had any stoppages so 
Uh, sorry, we've got five minutes to go, of course. It's 35 minute halves. I've got it in my head, it's a 30 minute. Another substitution down by the touchline. Number 12. Now, there it is. Number 16. Number 2 is coming off. Isaac Mazavi. And it's 16 who. I don't. Uh, sorry, James. Yes, Isaac. Mazuri, and I don't have a number 16. Um, oh, yes, I do. Hold on, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. Excuse me. Zach Smith, number 16. Comes on. And his team certainly in need of a little bit of inspiration out there. Hurstmere who, well as you heard in the interview with Gary Joyce, their manager, here's an opportunity. Geek keeper stays in his line, shot from distance, what a save that is. Brilliant goalkeeping. And there's applause all round and well deserved. This is a superb goalkeeping here from Isaac Greenway. And, well I think that would have beaten a number of players but what a dive that was across to save his team and rightfully congratulations from some of his fellow players oh and another big chance for Glenmore how they need this goal right at the end a goal now would make such a difference and it was uh, well Walker oh was just over well as Zach Smith who we just saw come on he's on his knees there he really thought that was going in that could be a major moment in this match brilliant save from the goalkeeper and then from the resulting corner ball just going over the crossbar Louis Jordan down the left hand side and again feeds Charlie Thomas 10 and 11 just constantly playing off each other time and time again and Glenmore and Winter just cannot find a solution goalkeeper gets a little bit more distance this time around Franklin finally finds a bit of space but not for long he's Jordan is straight on him Mia out to Smith but that ball's too short and well it's it's Louis Jordan again the amount of miles he's putting in covering a lot of space putting a lot of pressure under the Glenmore and Winton defensive line Frankie Boggins that ball cleared Final minute of the first half. Sam McLaren George, well, he scored from not too dissimilar position last time. That ball has swung in. Goalkeepers dropped it. The referee's going to give that one to him. Might be a bit fortunate there. I'll just watch this one again. Is there a challenge on the goalkeeper? Oh, I think he's just dropped that, to be honest. I think the referee has been quite generous. As we have a free kick for Glenmore and Winton. Can they get a goal? Well, 
Well, that's uh, that probably just sums up their first half, really, doesn't it? Really lacklustre ball forward, straight out of play. We are in injury time. I don't think we've seen a board for additional minutes up at all. Well, there is the half-time whistle, and what a start for Hurstmere. 3-0. Here we are on Schools Football Week. They lead in this major national final. And the teams go off to the dressing room. And uh, well, there's, some, uh, there's a bit of serious talking to take place in there. Half time here at Selhurst Park. Glenmore and Winton Academy nil. Hurstmere School three and uh, well great to see some of the some of the parents already applauding game's not over yet though well remember what happened uh, was it Liverpool versus AC Milan AC Milan with 3-0 up at half time Liverpool chased it down in the second half can Glenmore and Winton do the same here today. Well, let's have a look at some highlights of the first half before we just take a little break. And here's the first goal, and this was, again, a long ball over the top and, well, left for the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper, I don't know if he called or not, but it was... Louis Jordan, who was chasing into the gap, saw the opportunity and well, a bit of an inquest there at the back for Glenmore and Winton. You see Mir is saying this is OK, but he doesn't realise that Jordan has come in behind him. And that's Glenmore and Winton, one goal ahead, but it, here's another half opportunity. Appeals for offside. This one uh, blocked brilliantly by Mia. And then Charlie Thomas again just getting a quick turn, a quick flick. But it was uh, pretty much one-way traffic here. And here you see a clearance by Mia. This is one cracking goal from long, long distance. That's got to be 35 yards. As Sam McLaren-George puts his foot through it. And that's 2-0 from a long way out. And the goalkeeper's uh, looking forlorn. You see, the clearance clearance wasn't bad here, but it just fell beautifully for Sam McLaren-George here. Who you feel doesn't actually get a full... Like, th th these balls are very light, of course. Um, I'm going to sound like an old granddad here, talking about how balls used to be so much heavier, but... And uh, so that was goal number two, and then here's goal number three, and a real, real calamity of errors at the back, to be honest. Ball could have been put just about anywhere, no real pressure on the goalkeeper. Tried to side foot it to his own player, and Louis Jordan, who's covered just about every blade of pitch on this grass, was there for the interception, and then slightly heavy touch. But just got a foot in, in time, and that was 3-0. Celebrations and congratulations to his teammates. Here's a, what could be probably the most significant uh, moves of the match, because Glenmore certainly came into the game later on. Brilliant goalkeeping here, very brave goalkeeping indeed. Um, here's another half chance for Hurstmere, by the way. This was uh, Charlie Thomas, who... Forced the goalkeeper into a very smart save. Another half chance here. Again, Charlie Thomas coming in and this time going in on his right foot. And 
in the end, uh, a number of deflections. But uh, it wasn't all one-way traffic. Here was a great opportunity with Rob Taylor firing in a tremendous strike. And what a save that is from Isaac Greenway there. Really smart goalkeeping. See this from uh, ground level. Great shot and a superb save. And well cleared there by Fred Ward. We've not really mentioned many of the defenders often, but and this from the resulting corner, and what an opportunity that was. Almost went in here. I think uh, a few of the Hurstmere players were were sort of more taken with Walker and Mir, but it was right at the back post. Real opportunity there. And then finally, chance here for Hurstmere is a. Uh, well, this was, yes, I did accuse the referee of being a little bit kind as uh, the goalkeeper dropped the ball and the referee judging that to be a free kick. So, 3-0 to Hurstmere at half-time. Going to have a quick break here, get a glass of water and we'll be back for the second half. Teams are out quite early here for the second half. That was a very short half time. We've got some a number of substitutions lined up. It used to be really quick in the old days. You literally just used to shout across the pitch. Player off and on. Yes, well, we've got a substitute goalkeeper because the uh, Isaac Greenway was not uh, wearing a number. And there you see 16 and 10 so Louis Jordan has done his work for the first half well done and Thomas Bince is on 12 and 9 Marcel Gordon is off and Joe Sandy is on so basically all four substitutes and 14 and 5 so Tommy Allen Beatty is on and five is Fred Ward is off. Right, well that was quite a busy little half-time period. And here we go for the second half. With Hurstmere. Yeah, 
leading. Three goals to nil in the red, kicking from left to right here at Selhurst Park. It's a very different front line for Hurstmere in the second half. Early, early attack and win a corner. It's the first corner of the match here. So maybe there is a little bit of a a move. Let's see. It'd be really interesting if uh, there's no doubt they need to score early and they've swung that one right into the heart of the box and the linesman has given it. It is a goal. They have scored early. And do we have life back in this match? The corner was swung in. And it's 3-1. You see the ball comes in. It's a really well taken corner. And that ball is definitely behind the line. And the referee awards it. The linesman gave it. And look at the celebrations. It really was uh, incredible. Here's again, you can just see that ball's definitely behind the line. Don't think you need uh, Hawkeye to to make that call. was the substitute number 14 who scored that Harrison Marsh and now Glenmore just putting a bit more pressure on here there's Marsh the goal scorer That's a good ball in, and there's a half chance there for Franklin, who didn't quite commit to the header. Some serious pressure here on Hurstmere. And well, a little bit of frustration as well from the Hurstmere defensive. Really being put under a little bit of pressure early on. And, uh, always fascinating to hear the, the coaches telling their protégés on the pitch to just relax. That's a really good quality corner. And goalkeeper does very well to handle that. A lot of pressure on uh, such young shoulders or young hands, I should say. And Franklin, well, he's starting to see a little bit more of the ball in this second half. That's Missouri. Franklin and Missouri starting to enjoy a bit more possession in midfield for Glenmore and Winton. This game is far from over. Goal scorer, Harrison Marsh, and he's still got the ball. Just needs to get half a second to be able to pass it. They've managed to keep possession. Walker, top goal scorer for Glenmore and Winton really hasn't had much of the ball and 
the bounce of the ball defeating Josh Mazura there and it's Hersmere who can't get the ball out of their own half it's complete reversal here Frankie Boggins looks, looks out wide and there's uh, Tommy Allen Beatty trying to chase the ball down but just loses control of it at a vital moment really good play there from uh, Harry Stevenson number 12 substitutes are really turning it on and what a tackle that is it's a blue sea of football from right to left here as that was Cohen element real change over here only five minutes gone in his second half still 30 minutes to go Glenmore Winton have one of the goals they need they need another two Zura wants to play the ball down the line but it was only Harrison Stevenson who actually committed to that all the other players are still staying in the box element Mia lovely ball in lots more space for Stevenson who decides to have a shot from long distance and you know we do have a reserve goalkeeper in so there's possibly a little bit of a let's give him a try out well I'll tell you what William Hackett has done really well in goals so far caught a really difficult corner and was never in danger with that shot either so he's probably answered the questions that Glenmore and Winton were asking nice play from the back for Hurstmere but again the midfield for Glenmore and Winton are incredibly strong Stevenson again is he going to have another attempted shot? He'll get the free kick as he goes down under the challenge. Lovely skills here from Harry Stevenson, who's really flourished since coming on. shot at goal here Jack uh, Franklin looks like he he may well have a pop keepers managed to get there but the rebound is put in and game is well and truly on here Glenmore and Winton have scored a second and in eight minutes they are only one goal behind. This was a really difficult ball for the goalkeeper to deal with. It was swerving, it was moving, it was dipping and it was Walker who got on the end of it, the top goal scorer. For Glenmore and Winton has now got 12 to his name and another free kick from a very similar position has been awarded and you know what's going to happen here William Donnelly the referee certainly saw a free kick and you can be pretty sure that there will be another shot on goal 10 minutes into the second half did I say about Liverpool and AC Milan? What a crazy game this sport is. A substitution by the looks of it taking place. Who's that going off? I 
here we go. Oh, just slipped at the vital time. And the referee, well, he hit it twice, so the referee's saying that uh, that was an illegal free kick, and he's absolutely right. He slipped as he went to hit it, and so he ended. Played it from one, one boot to another. And Jack Franklin uh, is checking his studs in the distance back there. Well, Hurstmere just got a bit of recovery to do here. As uh, Charlie Seguin tries to win the ball back, but it's again Glenmore and Winton looking to push forward here down the right hand side doing most of their attacking down the right here's a great ball down the left hand side and well the burners are going on here from Franklin who's obviously a classy player Glenmore and Winton captain just tries to find Missouri but the ball's given away the balls uh, I think we do have some spare balls to go and find you don't have to uh, go into the seating to go and get it Missoula tackles Hennis uh, sorry uh, Thomas there uh, just sums up how this game is so different in the second half Thomas and Jordan were running absolute riot over their opponents in the first half and now it Thomas well Jordan is on the bench and Thomas can't get two seconds with the ball at the moment That's unfortunate as Tommy Allen Beatty just falls flat on the ground over the ball. Just made that fatal mistake of looking away as the ball came to him. Now here's a chance of a counter. Here's Thomas. Tries to go himself. Mia clears the ball. Wasn't a lot of players up front there for Hurstmere. Thomas uh, still good quality ball in. Still only one player in the box. Here's Seguin. Seguin straight at the goalkeeper. Franklin turns himself into danger though. Taylor. Sorry, Frankie Boggins there going to Tommy Allen Beatty. Beatty has a long distance shot. There's a pretty much power in that one. And uh, in the end, massively overhit it. At the moment, they just need a little bit of time, don't they? Goalkeeper has to go and find it himself. I suppose uh, ball, boys, ball boys and ball girls are currently uh, not permitted under COVID regulations, I suppose. <coughs> How we all can't wait for things just to get back to normal. What a kick that is from Mia, all the way up to the halfway line. Element does well to keep the ball in. Oh, good play here. That's a great ball from Missouri and Marsh. The goal scorer just failed to get on the end of that. But great football from Glenmore and Winton. Now here's Charlie Seguin. 
but that's a poor pass from him, really so. Now Franklin tries to play the the big ball through the defence. Zero. Marsh trying to get on the end of that, but well at the moment it's just loose play from both teams. The ball swapping possession almost every few seconds as each team just gives it back to the other. Just need to see a little bit of possession from one of the teams. Quick throw from Stevenson. Skills from Seguin getting past Mizuva. William Hackett, good long kick. But it seems to be Glenmore and Winton who are first to the ball every time. Here's Alan Beatty, takes on his player. Thomas is looking for it, he's free inside. Oh, and save with the foot. Goodness. Ball still in play. Stevenson. Now it goes out of play. No, it doesn't actually, sorry. Eventually it does. Well, here's the opportunity just now. What a chance this was, and the foot just stuck out from Vickery. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Are we having a little water break or something? Looks like uh, all the players are just quickly getting rehydrated. Don't know if this is an official uh, water break. We've got a oh, we've got a player down in the distance, so there's just somebody getting treatment at the moment. Right, I have a duty. There's a there's a big moment at, uh, to come. Is that um, in the old days I used to pick the player of a match myself, but I got so bad at it that I've, the powers that be have decided that I nominate two players from each team, which they think I'm good at hand. I can just about handle, and then you guys can get to vote on the school's football Twitter. The official Twitter account for the ESFA. And basically, they can, uh, you can, you, the audience, can vote for your player. So I'm just having a little think about this. So I'll give it another 10 minutes or so, but uh, I think uh, I've got four players marked so far, and we'll see what happens in the next five or so minutes.
Here's Element down the left hand side. Got a half opportunity there. There were players in the box as well. Four players for Glenmore and Winton who were all in the box waiting for the ball. That's been one real element of uh, this second half from the team in blue. They've really got a lot of players in the box and overlapped when need be. Here's Franklin, who's been absolutely central to just about everything that the team in blue have done. But that's wonderful skills. And, well, it's Louis Jordan who's back on the pitch. He's been a real standout player in this match. And made something happen from nothing there, didn't he? There's a great ball in and that one's gone out for a goal kick actually. Thirteen minutes to go. One goal in it. And Hurstmere definitely will that uh, change. Will bringing on back on Louis Jordan make a big difference? Here's a half chance for Alan Beatty, but that ball was just kicked away from him. He looked as if he was through on goal there. Boggins. A bit more space in midfield opening up now for Hurstmere, but loose ball. Now here's Jordan. He certainly is a high quality player. Oh, there's a miscontrol in the middle. Thomas trying to get in there. The referee is going to give a free kick there for a little nudge off the ball on Jordan. kick real ball heading oh what a flick up what a save and eventually it's in as the goalkeeper the referee has allowed it it's 4-2 and Hurstmere well I just wondered if there was going to be a potential foul there On the goalkeeper, but the referee has uh, has given the goal. Let's have a look at this again. Here's the free kick coming in, flicked on by the number three, Jake Beaumont. And oh yes, that's a that's a fair goal. That is the ball was loose in and around the box. Goalkeeper wasn't sure where the ball was actually, and there was certainly wasn't any of the uh, kicking the ball out of the goalkeeper's hands. Or anything like that and now with 10 minutes to go first me have that two goal cushion that all important two goal cushion
So, play of the match nomination time. Drum roll, please. I think there's two players from each side. So we just watched this the goalkeeper does well there. I'm going to go for number eight, Jank Franklin, the captain for Glenmore and Winton. And number 14, Harrison Marsh, who's been wonderful since coming on. Been at the centre of so many moves. As uh, Moorcroft, that's a great tackle on Moorcroft there. And the parents applauding that one. They like that tackle. It really was. Uh, that was a real statement of intent from Hertzmere. Hertzmere. And Jordan trying to go everywhere himself at the moment. And that will be a free kick. So those are the two players I am nominating from Glenmore and Winton. And two players from Hurstmere. A little bit more difficult as goalkeeper does superb there under real pressure. I think uh, it would be remiss of me to not include number 10, Louis Jordan. And here's Thomas. Thomas, oh, saved by the goalkeeper. Here's Jordan. And that will be a corner kick. Brilliant save there from the goalkeeper, Charlie Vickery. Looks like there's a couple of uh, substitutes uh, maybe taking place here. Somebody's down in the corner. Here's Thomas. Brilliant move. Goes past Alfie, where, um, Tom Phillips. And then Jordan. That was uh, Thomas Bince there. Just gets the tackle in on. Player. There's a few substitutes potentially going to be taking place here, as you can see on this camera. Uh, so, number... Uh, yes, I still have a player to select from Hurstmere which is very difficult because so many good performances throughout here um, but I think I'm going to go for number six McLaren George who scored that spectacular second goal and has been wonderful in midfield throughout has been one of the players who really has been in the middle of it all, breaking up attacks from the team in blue. Asen Mia comes back on, and it's Tom Phillips coming off. So those are our four. Franklin and Marsh for the team in blue, and in red, it's Jordan and McLaren George. Those are our four nominees. Get yourself down to the Schools FA schools football twitter account i should get it correct which is the official account for the england schools football association and place your votes which will be open any second as we only have uh, about five minutes to go in this match glenmore and winton really have to score quickly now and there's a long distance shot well you know what that's as good as anything because there's every chance that could go in the top corner and William Hackett is not the tallest of goalkeepers and this is one of the uh, I think probably if you were to say the the most difficult thing with under 13 football is you can get uh, players who are just not tall in goal who can't reach the crossbar and if you do get a shot in that's just below the bar there's no way they're going to save it so it is that difficult transition in this age where some players are big, tall and strong and some players have not yet had that growth spurt. Five minutes to go. Glenmore and Winton have to score very soon. And here's a half chance down the left hand side and what a break that was. Zach Moorcroft thought he was in but superb defending from Alfie Wareham. That really was an opportunity for Glenmore and Winton to get back in this match. 
He thought he was through on goal that did Moorcroft. Well, they scored from a corner at the beginning of his half. That's a really high quality corner as well. That was uh, Franklin uh, really hit some mean corner for sure. And he's going to go and do it again. Here's the corner swung in again. In at the near post. Mia just losing control. Franklin again. And Franklin slips just at a vital time. Just as he slipped when he was hitting that free kick where then we're gonna have another substitution. Substitutions taking place. Last three minutes here. And the linesman says onside. Alan Beatty through to the back post <laughs> and Jordan who's after his hat-trick nearly got there here's Alan Beatty was that offside? I think offside given there well they're not hanging around here Glenmore and Winton no they time he's not there Fed oh here's a chance what a save and William Hackett pulls off an absolutely smashing save there but here's another half chance oh it's in number six has scored and it's 4-3 with minutes to go oh my lord everything's going on here Well, I haven't got time to keep up with it all. First of all, brilliant save from the goalkeeper. And we're going to come out here because we don't want to miss any of the live action. Less than a minute to go. Shots coming in from anywhere at the moment just to try and get a... And now here's a chance of a breakaway. Here's Jordan. We're into extra time. Plays in Thomas. Thomas surely. Alan Beatty. Oh, and it's pulled out the air by the goalkeeper. Will there be one last attack from Glenmore and Winton? What a match this has been to on National Schools Football Week and that one's gone out of play. Oh, well, let's have another look at this. The goalkeeper makes an absolutely superb save here. And, well, the ball gets back to him. And then, well, instead of just holding on to the ball, maybe the excitement of everything, but he's given it away and, well... What an incredible goal that was. Brilliant finish as we're back to live play. And well, we've got a corner. It might be the slowest corner you ever see. 
Here's the first save. What a save here from Hackett. Then there's a miss kick. Hackett picks the ball up with only minutes to go. He doesn't need to do this. And there's a bit of an experience as well. He ends up playing the ball straight to Charlie White. I've got to give him a name check. I've not managed to say his name yet, but what a finish that was. And here's White again. They've got to clear the ball up. Time is up on our clock. We've had a bit of injury. We've had a lot of substitutions. There could be two or three minutes. We've not been told at all by the sidelines how much extra time there is to play. We haven't had any nod from an official. We really don't know how much time there is left now. It's, you can be sure it's not a lot at all. Alan Beatty is just happy to hit the ball into distance. That's a really clever ball there. As Thomas puts Mir under pressure. There's a real tussle there. Mir manages to win the ball back. And it's going to be the big boot downfield. McLaren George again. Smallest lad on the pitch yet again wins a header. Moorcroft and a cramp the referee is going to have to stop the clock again oh that's so painful come on <laughs> lift his leg looks like we're going to have a substitution out there get yourself onto the school's twitter it's the uh, school's football is the Twitter handle and make sure you get your vote in for your player of the match I think uh, Mark Tupenov as uh, substitutions are taking place in the distance um, if I was voting I would certainly be voting for Louis Jordan who's been an absolutely phenomenal player in this game score of two goals and I think significant when he was off the pitch that's when the Glenmore and Winton team were on top and as soon as he came on things suddenly leveled up again so he's uh, certainly a player that uh, has made a real difference when he's been on the pitch but there's uh, well he's on it now and the whistle has gone Hurstmere win the ESFA boys under 13 PlayStation Schools Cup for B teams by four goals to three and great sportsmanship being shown by both teams here wonderful wonderful game and we are going to stay for the presentations here at Selhurst Park and there you see the full-time score it was so close in the end Glenmore and Winton Academy 3 Hurstmere School 4 and well we are going to wait for the presentations wherever they may be we're just uh, we're not sure where they're going to actually be held at the moment so we'll just uh, shall we have a look at the second half highlights there were a lot and I've tried to cut down a few here and this is what happened in the second half two minutes in goal for the Blues as the substitute Harrison Marsh number 14 who was absolutely superb in the second half got a foot on this just over the line before it was cleared by McLaren Georgia that made it 3-1 then we had a free kick from Franklin who was always going to shoot here put a lot of swerve a lot of dip 
really difficult ball for Hackett to deal with and it was Walker who came in on the rebound and that made it 3-2 we're literally only six or seven minutes into the second half so much to be played and Walker scores there was another free kick a few minutes later for Franklin in virtually the same position he actually slipped as he was taking it here's Alan Beatty here big chance for Thomas who twisted and Vickery manages to get the foot out to save the day and keep his team in it but here was uh, an important goal as the ball the Vickery saves he's not sure where the ball is and Thomas manages to put the ball into the back of the goal I was uh, suggesting perhaps there could be a free kick there but the referee was absolutely right one-handed save from a goalkeeper he's got his back turned he doesn't really know where the ball is and Thomas puts it away which he deserves he puts a lot of work into this match did Charlie Thomas and here's Thomas again with another chance he had so many chances so another save there from Vickery and interesting to see that when uh, Jordan was back on the pitch and channels opened up here's Alan Beatty who this was a real chance for Jordan to get his hat-trick here oh, took a swing at it and well it was great defending no doubt that if the defender wasn't there not sure who it was that uh, that would uh, not have uh, been ended up in the back of the net here's uh, the final goal as Walker miss kicks Hackett picks up the ball and then in a sort of flurry in a real rush tries to play the ball to Phillips and well that was superb play there uh, sorry, tries to play it to Wareham and it was Charlie White who came in. Zach Moorcroft. His shot was saved by the goalkeeper. Walker missed kicks. And then here's brilliant anticipation from Charlie White who dinks it over into the back of the net. And that is it. There was just no time left for Glenmore and Winton to get that final score so we're going to stay here for the presentation so we'll listen to our MC here who's getting ready
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will now make the presentation of the trophy and medals on the field of play. First of all, what a tremendous game of football that actually was. Both teams should be immensely proud of their achievements and their performances today. Well done, guys. Before we move on to the presentation of the medals, there is an award that we want to present, and that's for player of the match. Player of the match has been voted for by viewers on the ESFA TV this afternoon. And the viewers have voted for first year number 10, Louis Jordan, Player of the Match. Yes, well done, viewers. That's certainly the correct decision. Louis Jordan, absolutely superb performance today. Outstanding player on the pitch. There is no doubt. And just a fraction of an inch away from a hat trick. Assistant referee Joshua Reed and Shay James and the fourth official Alfie Howard. Okay, we now move on to the presentation of the medals for the two teams. Commiserations to Glenmore Winter Academies. Guys, once again, you've been tremendous today and to reach the National Rugby Run in the whole of England is a fantastic feat in itself. So well done. So let's put our hands together for the boys as they come forward to get their medals, starting with the goalkeeper, number one, Charlie Bickle. Number two, Isaac Magisiri. Number three, Cohen Allen. Number four, Tom Phillips. Number five, Roman Meyer. Number six, Charlie White. Number seven, Rob Taylor. Number eight, the captain, Jack Franklin. Number nine, Bradley Walker. Number 10, Zach Moorcroft. Number 11, Charlie Hennessy. Number 12, Harry Stevenson. Number 14, Harrison Marsh. Number 15, Josh Missouri. And number 16, Zach Smith. Now on to today's winners and national champion, first year school from Kent. Well done, guys. It's a tremendous achievement for national champions of England. Enjoy the moment. So let's put our hands together for the boys from Kent, starting with the goalkeeper, Isaac Greenaway. Number two, James Allen. Number three, Jake Beaumont. Number four, Alfie Wearer. Number five, Fred Wolf. Number six, Sam McLaren George. Number seven, Frankie Boggan. Number nine, Marcel Gordon. Number ten, and player of the match, Louis Jordan. Number eleven, Charlie Thomas. Number 12, Joe Sandy. 
Number 14, Tommy Allen Beatty. Number 16, Thomas Bins. And number one, William Hackett. And the team manager for Hurst Bay School, Gary Joyce. I'm going forward to collect your medal, please. And finally, the captain of Hurst Bay School, Charlie Sabrin, will come forward to collect his medal. From Mike Spinks, who is an English FA board member. And he will collect the trophy to crown first Miss Hall Champions of England. So, wonderful victory there for Hursmere School. They took, have taken this under 13 PlayStation F -Ski FC Schools Cup for B teams. As uh, a few pictures uh, from Gary, our photography 365 man, working hard. And, uh, well, they don't have far to go. North Kent, Bexley, probably 45 minutes or so, isn't it? Um, and, of course, Bournemouth not too far away from here, so they found a nice ground that's not too far for the two teams to come to. And the parents have all managed to make it. Congratulations to the boys at first year school. We hope you enjoyed today's national final. And Fantastic. now everybody... Uh, Everybody fights over the trophy and getting their pictures, and uh, yeah, go and uh, go and chat to the parents and the family about the game. Brilliant, uh, brilliant to see. Well, we're hoping we're going to get a quick word with uh, the manager if we can. We do have uh, a bit more football also on the ESFA YouTube channel. We've got England schoolgirls against Scotland on the 5th of June up in Newcastle. And in fact, on the 6th of June, also in the same area, the England schoolboys will play Harrogate Town under 19. So that'll be a very competitive match for sure. And then across June and July, we'll have county and district finals so some really high quality football to come on the england schools youtube channel for sure Well, it's been a real uh, pleasure seeing such uh, talented kids. Playing a final, of course, from last season. So this is the 2021 season. No, it isn't. It's the 1920 season, of course. I'm, uh, I'm getting totally mixed up here. Although... Uh, Yes, if it was the 2021 season, that would be this season. That can't be happening. Um, 
we're going to see if we can just get a quick word with uh, the manager and his thoughts. And, uh, well, this is... Uh, they've had a very successful season already in their local area. And here they are now winning a national title. Absolutely brilliant to see. Pleased to say, I'm very pleased to say, um, Gary, um, the Hurstmere manager has joined us live. Hello, hello, Gary. How are you doing? You've aged, you've aged a little bit since the start of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it certainly was. Very, it, very emotional out there. Very. Yeah. Good. Tell me, tell me your thoughts. What are your thoughts after the game now? Four-three victory. What a game. Wow, I, I'm glad it was at, at half time. It looked like it was going one way, and I'm so glad in the end that the opposition got something out of it as well because they were a good side. Uh, and so, uh, still nice to win, obviously. Um, but uh, to, if we had just walked away with it, that wouldn't have been so pleasant. So, to make it a good game has, uh, has made everyone realise what a tough place we are now. Yes, it was interesting, wasn't it? This is football through and through. You, you took off a couple of players at half time. And then suddenly you saw what great players the opposition were. What Once they had a little bit of space to play in, they absolutely stepped it up. And, you know, if, if it wasn't for maybe Franklin slipping over, um, it, you know, when he had a free kick from the identical spot, you were thinking, you know what, this could be three all within 10 minutes. Were you, were, were you getting a few yeah. eyeballs from parents around you going, what, what chain, you know, what, what were you doing? <laughs> Well, uh, it, it's a squad. It's a squad game, so you'll give everyone a go, and uh, and maybe I should have done the subs in a sort of a staggered it instead of all in one go, uh, and that did allow them in. So I take full blame for that. Um, but yeah, that little slip was uh, was timely for us, uh, and then uh, finally Charlie managed to um, to get a little toe poke to give us a two goal cushion, which um, cool. Love the heart rate. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've got to say, Louis Jordan, what a player he is. And, and whenever he had the ball, something happened. And that was so noticeable. And obviously, he got the man in the match. Like, you know, he, he is a real talent, that kid, isn't he? Yes, he's, uh, he, he, was all, he was on the verge of going up to the A-team. However, the, the A-team left winger contracted with Millwall, so we didn't really have a spot for him. Uh, and, uh, and he stayed down with the B-team with me and, uh, and has helped us uh, win the trophy that our school have never won. So oh, uh, I'm very pleased to have him in the team. Well, you've got a nice problem next season, haven't you? When you're selecting your teams for next season's competitions, like, what are you going to be, you know, I know what you're going to be doing over the summer. <laughs> Yeah, well, we had a B team versus A team warm up game a couple of days ago, and in the final seconds, it was a B team victory 3 2. So you're right, I've got a massive problem come September. Oh, that's but wonderful. it's nice to have that problem rather than the other way around. Absolutely. Um, j just, you must be so proud of the kids. You know, here they are, they're going into the summer, they're finishing their year fairly soon, and, you know, it, it's a great feeling for you that you've got a national title here. Um, in front of you know a lot of people watching online and parents like that must be, give, give you a great feeling for that short journey home. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's about an hour's journey and uh, and we are 
hoping to go all together, so that'll be great fun. But uh, to, to win a national is is such a and a big attribute, and um, and the guys are so great. They've they've been unbeaten all year or two years of as COVID has taken it to. But yeah, yeah. the Kent Cup and now the the national, so they're a good double winning side. Well, maybe we'll see you at the end of next season. We'll see what happens. But Gary Joyce, thank you very much for joining us, and well done to you and your team. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Gary. Well, Gary's going to head off into the distance, and well, we're going to head off into the distance as well. We've done our, we've done our job here today. Uh, many thanks to Hasib, Jack, and Sean, who are our cameramen down at Selhurst Park. And that's the scoreline that we will leave you with here as Glenmore and Winton 3, Hurstmere School 4, a victory for Hurstmere and well, a victory for them, for the B team over the A team as well. So they really do have some serious strength in depth. Thank you very much everybody for watching. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage here on the England Schools YouTube channel and we'll be seeing you again if you want to come and catch us next week July the 5th and 6th will be the England under 18 girls and boys teams will be playing some big games next week thanks for watching goodbye for now